So this is a Sony CD changer. I believe it's a five disc that has a couple problems. Uh, one is that the tray does not go back in. It's locked open. And usually that'll happen if somebody bumps it while it's open. I was told that this one uh, was opened and it didn't close afterwards, but I have a feeling that it was bumped when that happened. And it usually will cause it to skip a gear and it gets locked in place. The other issue is I was told that the disc platter doesn't spin and they had to force turn it to get the discs out, uh, which is not good because you can break a gear. But So we're going to take this apart, try and unjam the drawer and replace any belts that are needed. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So first things first, turn it on. You see when, you, when we first turn it on, it, the drawer does move a little bit. It's trying to pull it in, but it can't. So that tells me that that belt is at least still attached, although it may be loose. On the back of these, there's usually a little screw hole that you can use to manually, if the belt should break and you want to close the drawer or it closes, or it breaks while the drawer is closed, you can manually open or close the drawer. However, being that it's jammed, I don't want to twist it too hard because I don't want to break it. Um, so what we want to do is take it apart. Always make sure you unplug it before you take it apart. There's two screws here, two screws here, and two in the back. All right, and on this model, we're going to want to take the, f the front of it off. But before we do that, let's take the bottom off. OK, before we take the front panel off, There's a, there's a ribbon here, and then there's a ribbon underneath here. And they need to come out before we can take the panel off, because we don't want to rip them. They're, so these don't have a lock on them. They just slide right out. Some of them have a lock that you have to flip the little, you know, have to flip the little tabs out first. But these don't, so you just slide them out. And disconnect, or unscrew. the front. And one thing is, if you see here, let's see if I can zoom in. There is a belt, and this is the, the gear, the motor, and the belt. This is what opens and closes the drawer. And you notice that belt is a toothed, it's got some teeth on it, if you can see that too well. If you have to replace this belt because it's broken, it's right on the bottom. You don't even have to take the top off. You can just take the bottom off and put the belt on, put the bottom back on, and you're back in business. This one seems to be okay. It's a little bit loose, but it's still actually biting. So that one will be okay for now. right out. Some CD players have a front bezel that has to slide out for, for the cover to come off, but this one doesn't. However, it does have a bezel, but it doesn't need to come off to get the panel off. So we'll just put that
that back on. Well, that's that's loose. That's probably why it jumps because that's loose. Okay, so before we take the drawer off, let's take the tray off and see what the belt looks like there. So there's a little screw in the middle. You take the screw out and just lift the tray out. And there's the belt. And you can tell it doesn't, it's pretty shot. It's, <laughs> it has to go between there and there. And, uh, yeah, it's it's done. So I've already ordered a belt ahead of time. It's not a bad idea to you can either order a direct replacement like I've done because none of the other belts I have will fit since I've done these before. You can buy either on eBay or Amazon. There are sellers that sell 60 to 100 belts for under $10 and they're of all different sizes and you can use those just to have on hand should you need to replace any on any of your equipment. So let's take the new belt out and you just slip it on and roll it over. And there we go. And put the tray back on. You don't have to put this tray on in any specific order. It will figure itself out once you turn it on. Now let's get this whole drawer off. So on the side here, there's these two clamps that form rails that hold the tray in place. As you can see, the tray won't move. It's on both sides. So you take these two, these two rails off and make sure you keep the screws with them because you don't want to mix them up. say and it doesn't look like anything's broken and one thing I will say is I, it was my mistake when you pull this out just make sure that there's no no ribbon connections because you don't want to break any luckily that one didn't break and that's also not a locker so that just pulls right out I've already done that accidentally but good thing it didn't break so let's do this I'm gonna plug the front panel back in these gears, these sprockets have to be aligned just right for this tray to work properly. And I'll show you how to do that. It's, it's very simple. All you have to do, and this is you got to be careful because you don't want to electrocute yourself, but everything's pretty well protected back there. I plug the front end that way I have access to the open and close switch, but really don't even need to on this model. What you do is plug it in and watch, you'll see the gears actually move to their home position. So now the power is back off. I'm going to turn the power back on just to show you how it fixes itself again. See, that's his home position. That's where it wants to be. So we're going to unplug it. Unplug this. And the first things we're going to do is we're going to plug the tray back in. is plugged back into the board. You got to make sure you do that because that's what powers this motor. And you want to push it all the way back. And try to get it to rest on one of those those gears. So there. It's in its home position. That's where it wants to be. So let's test it. 
So I'm going to plug the front panel back in to the side. Now there are two connections on this one. You'll notice this one's just dangling. This is for the display. We don't need a display right this second, so this is the only cable we're going to use. So we plug it back in, turn it back on. And this is going to spin until it finds its home position. It's got to scan all the different disks, which there are none. So now we're going to open it. I'm just going to hold it just so it doesn't, doesn't come off because the rails are not in yet. And there you go, it's back in business. So we're going to kill the power. back on. And you will be touching the board, so make sure that you have it unplugged. Let's slide the front back on. Plug this little cable in down here. Make sure it goes all the way in. Same thing with the side cable. Actually, while it's upside down, let me screw these on. that little connector. Just plug this back in. And let's test it. Plug it, put it all back together. The question is now, will it actually play a CD?
There you go. Disc exchange works.